run it down to those marks that are inside there. Okay, so we're on start logging, we'll press that. It's a pretty good agreement between the two probes. Right? Yep. So we'll press this again and we'll say yes, it's the dry method. It's not going to be, but that won't matter. Uh, change decimal, no. Let's press that again. Hold to calibrate. We want to calibrate it, so we press it and hold it and let it go. It's waiting. 145.68, so it's pretty close together. So now we want to push the button to have that background reading. Yep. There it is there. Yeah, you can see it step up. One forty oh yeah, one fifty-six point three three. One fifty-six point five two. So it's spiked up just because it wasn't stirred and now it's settled down. And it's pretty close to that, we'll accept that, so we just press the button. Sixty-six point two six one sixty-six point five six. Okay, so they're pretty steady. So we'll accept that by pressing it once. That's our next reading. Seventy seven oh seven. Oh really really good. Seventy six nine zero. So we'll accept that. Yep. One to go. One eighty seven oh five. 7 11 87.03 So that's pretty good. We'll press that to accept that last value. And we've got a final CFT of 4.8. 0. 0. 0.48. That's right. Yep. Put probes in. Calm, flow and push button. So you can see we've chosen a, a well mixed part of the river. There's the top part of the reach. It's well mixed through this uh, ripple here and comes together through this sort of chute at the bottom. So we're putting the probes on each side where the water's forced back together. So avoid pools like this which is just going to slow the whole travel of the salt through the uh, reach. Hopefully the salt's well mixed and that probe on each side will just confirm that. And it may take trial and error a couple of goes. It took us two goes to get it in the best position, but uh, it doesn't take long to do. 144.16, 144.56. Okay, so if I push the button now, it'll start the actual gauging. Yeah, but but you'll probably wait until you yeah, mix the Yeah, we can salt. wait until we've mixed the flow up and mixed the solution salt. up. Yeah. Um, because once we push that button, It'll start recording the graph. Yeah. 
and we'll see it yeah. there. But what they're recommending is a kilogram of salt for a cubic of flow. So, so we haven't got we haven't got a cubic here today. No, and I don't I don't know that you've, I've never used less. Yeah. I've always used it, uh, yeah. and it's worked fine. Yeah. It doesn't go clear. No, 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 too much. Okay, so if I push the button now, it'll start the actual gauging. Yep. Actually on top of each other. Yeah, that's better. So now we've got the background reading against channel one. One forty-five nine nine. One forty-five well one one's staying quite steady, that one. Yeah. It's one forty-five push it once to start with. Yeah. Yeah, just push or push or rotate to finish. So push it once more. There we go. Oh, there we are. So is that 610 then, is it? Yeah. Leaders. Probably to come back to the background almost. So it's, point two. it's actually giving it a grade B. Yeah. Well, that's, that's new as well. That wasn't new. Yeah. Of course, the other way is to bring the measurement into Excel, just straight from the file. So we have a list of our files here from the site. So if we pick up the, um, the appropriate file which has the gauging data in it, open that, we get this uh, set out here. I've just highlighted the actual EC uh, values. So you can see the background values here. I've plotted them here as well against time. You can see our calibration at the start was point 486 which is bang in the middle of our range which is 0.4625.5 um, you can see our two probes background readings and if we scroll down you'll see these uh, EC readings jumping up as we go over our peak and coming back down to base value again and the end of our measurement displayed here I've just highlighted these colors it's all in black and it shows the, the one kilogram we've put in, the cal calibration factor that we actually got from our calibration. There's the range. Uh, the background reading beforehand. There's our discharge, so 610 litres. Uh, it gives it a grade. This grade is based on a Canadian um, percentages they put in there. So how they, they work it is uh, an A grade is 0 to 7%. If it's over 7%, uh, this is the uncertainty. It'll be uh, between 7 and 15, it is a B grade, and over 15% is a C grade. So, with this is something we hope to maybe uh, use or we'll slot NEMS in at this point. Uh, this is standard deviations, two standard deviations. The signal to noise just shows you how good the, uh, you know, the salt to the river, the quantities worked out. As an example here, all this adds error, of course, to the final reading. And if it was 100, signal to noise was 100, it adds about 1% error. And the fact that we're around about 40 adds about 2% error overall. So crucial getting that salt amount to the river volume correct. This one's the time and just the area under the curve, more diagnostic really. So just a bit of explanation of those results which you get in your... CSV file at the end of the gauging and that can be stored just on the gauging file against the site just as we normally would. We put the dilution gauging into the Fathom Scientific website. If we copy this link and we want to put it into Chrome rather than Windows Explorer which it doesn't seem to like. Sign in. 
username is there we are, so remember from last time, Miwa.user. And the password is Miwa, capital D, Dunedin. Remember me, sign in. So when you get into the web page, it comes up with this screen here and it will show us the uh, sites for New Zealand, if you like, which is the way um, Gabe set it up. But you can add stations here for a new one as well, just in case of. Um, entering in the station name, description, and saving it. And let's go back to our Mai Tai at Nelson example. So this is the, uh, the measurements we've already loaded in here, but when you're first setting up, you want to upload a quick quick file here. So we'll be clicking on here, then go and search for the file, which they are here. At the moment, we have to load them one by one. Gabe says he is going to change this so we can upload everything f concerning that um, the one gauging. So the, there's several files here, some of them being the calibration and the actual gauging. So you choose the file you want and then upload it. Uh, I won't because it's already been uploaded and then it'll display below. So we've entered four, four results in here as you can see. If you look at the dates and times, you see these ones are done earlier around lunchtime and they varied quite a lot, 49, uh, 490 and 560 litres. And the second pair we did, that's the two probes, two probes the first time, two probes the second time. We're much closer at 520, 530. Uh, this difference here was due to the positioning of the probes. They were, one of them was well off to the side um, in the flow down where we recorded it, where these two here were much closer together in the well mixed stream. Um, but at the end of the day, averaging these two gives you the average of these, uh, the, the second two as well. So they, it all sort of comes out in the wash. And the um, correlation factor too is very good for within the limits for all, all four of them. And you can see they've been loaded down here as part of the uh, calibration for the site. Uh, this graph here would attempt to plot the four on a rating curve, but because the stage never changed, it's, um, it's struggling to do that. But if you had several, it will give you a nice curve. So if we look at one of these, for instance, if we go to this first measurement here, So it's coming up with some uh, a nice display here of the actual discharge or dilution gauging we've just carried out. This is just for the one probe, remember, and we've got here, you can see the results of 533. Um, we can go in here and actually play around with these results. Um, if we look under discharge here, so we've got 533 at the present, but if we, for instance, this is just showing the importance of getting this background figure right before we end a measurement. If we go in here and select, right, say from the start, but we cut it off a bit soon, say at uh, 22 minutes there, so it jumps up here, it makes a big difference to the discharge here, so it's 640 litres now, so you can see it hasn't reached that base value. And if we reset that back to the end, it jumps back to yeah 439. So you know the further the importance of getting to that base background reading before we end a measurement quite crucial. Um, if we don't have a correlation factor at the start, we didn't haven't done a calibration. We can select one from maybe from a pre previous measurement that needs one to calculate the discharge. Uh, previous measurement at that site that is. So something to start using online and storing our data there. Everyone can see it from this place, this uh, same website. So good to share results here and just double check um, you know, that we're, we're doing things correctly.